Okay, welcome to this uh, little video I've prepared on sampling from a finite population, which is from week nine. Um, I know a couple of you, or quite a few of you, are having problems with this particular week, so I thought I'd uh, do a little bit of an example here, something quite simple um, to give you the, the nuts and bolts of this particular week. So here's my example about estimating the average IQ of university students. Uh, so let's just say there's 25,000 university students in the whole campus and we're trying to estimate the average IQ of those students. And we're going to take a sample from that 25,000. Obviously we're not going to try to sample the whole thing, so we've got a small sample to try to uh, make an estimate of that population mean IQ. What happens when that particular sample is very small? Well, when n is very small, so say we've only got five or ten people in our sample. Our estimate for the population mean is the sum of x on n. We know how to do that. We've dealt with that since the very first studies we've had in econometrics, sum of x on n. But our confidence about that particular estimate is particularly low. So what I mean by that is that if you have five people that have a particularly high IQ, in your sample, or maybe five people that have a particularly low IQ in your sample. I mean, it's possible that either of those two situations could occur because you're just sampling five people. It's uh, very, it's quite probable that you'll get an extreme sample there. So you're not very confident about this estimate for your population mean. It's got a high variance, in other words. But as n increases, as little n increases, so say you now have 100 people in your sample, 200 people, you start becoming more and more confident about this estimate because, you know, you might have a few people with really high IQs in your sample, but eventually you're going to start getting some more people with low IQs to kind of even it out. So you've got a lower variance about that particular estimate. So you're more confident, there's a lower variance. Finally, if you've managed to sample the entirety of the uh, university population, 25,000 people, um, I'd suggest you could probably think of better things to do with your time, but if you've done that, you actually have now an exact estimate. In fact, it's no longer an estimate, it is in fact the real deal, it's the population mean. Your sample mean here is your population mean, so you have no variance associated with that particular estimate. It's perfect, bang on the population mean. So, how do we use formulas then to calculate that particular um, value of variance, because we know there's a statistical um, quantitative measure called variance. So what, how do we calculate that? That's where these little formula, formulae come in. The variance of x-bar, the variance of our sample mean, is given by all this stuff. And you, you'll notice it looks kind of similar to what we've done before. That s squared on n stuff, s squared on n, hopefully you've recognized that. That is what we, we're used to seeing as the variance of x bar. But now we've got another little factor in front of the s squared on n. Now that takes account of the fact that you have a finite population. Up until this point, we've assumed an infinite population. And if you can think about what happens here, if capital N is infinity, then this fraction, that yellow fraction, is going to tend towards 1 leaving us with just s squared on little n, like we're used to seeing. But if capital N is finite, we need to take account of that, and that's what these little yellow um, factors are doing for us. So appreciate what happens when little n, when our sample gets larger and larger and actually approaches the size of the population, approaches big N, these yellow squares are actually, well, this part of the formula is going to tend towards zero because little n, the, the top part of the formula at least, is going to tend towards zero, making the whole thing zero, meaning that our variance of our estimate is getting smaller and smaller. We're getting more and more confident about that estimate of the sample mean. Sorry, estimate of the population mean. So that's it. That is what I want you to keep in mind when we're doing the rest of this particular um, tutorial.